Welcome to growing your own food in your own backyard. And if you are new to my channel, please consider subscribing and don't forget to hit the like button. I want to give you an update on growing moringa plants indoors and outdoors in zone 5B, semi-arid environment. Now, I have previous videos on growing moringa plants, but this year, I'm growing these two moringa plants outdoors. So as you can see, they're very, very healthy. This one here actually was grown from this particular tree that I cut off about six months ago because when moringas get really leggy, you really want to chop them back or cut them back so that they can bush out like this. Moringa plants are very forgiving. You can actually take a moringa plant that literally died back and stick it in the soil and it would literally grow again. They're referred to as miracle plants, so they have so many beneficial properties. In this particular case, this little one here is growing from a seed. And again, this one is growing from a plant that, a tree that I chopped off and you can see that it's now got 18 inches um, height on it. This one here is growing from a seed. One thing that you want to keep in mind is that Moringa plants have long tap roots, almost kind of look like a carrot root. And so they need a lot of depth in order to grow. Now, in my case, I cannot grow Moringas in the ground because we are zone 5B, we have a short growing season. And by the time the Moringas really get growing or get started, it's time to rip them up, rip them out of the ground, I should say. So I have to grow my Moringa plants in containers. As the Moringa gets taller, then what I prefer to do is basically just cut it back, harvest the top part of the tree, and then allow it to grow back some more. Some of the challenges I'm having with bringing Moringas into my, um, in, in, into my uh, home, when the weather gets cold is that they go through an acclimation adjustment where now they're leaving the outdoor sunlight and they're coming into an indoor southern exposure window or they're going on my grow light. They go through this adjustment, the leaves turn yellow and they drop. But again, the Moringa plant's very forgiving and then they grow back again. But I think I got maybe a good two months on this particular Moringa tree. I'm expecting it to get about this tall. I will go ahead and chop it down halfway, harvest the leaves, and then bring them indoors. In this particular case, if this Moringa uh, plant takes off, I would also put it in a larger container keep it elongated, make sure the containers are, are, have depth in it so that they can grow. Now I'm gonna bring you indoors and show you a trial and error I had with one of my Moringa plants and one that's grown in a container like this that's grown indoors that's doing real well. And I wanna talk to you about some of the trials and errors that I've had growing Moringa plants. And I wanna give you some tips on how to not make the mistakes I've made so that you can continue growing them well indoors. Follow me. These are the two Moringa plants I'm growing indoors. As you can see, this one I started April of 2021 from a seed. And this is just a little taller than the one outdoors. And this one here is where I made my mistake. Here's a photo of my Moringa that was about two feet tall and it was really, really doing well. And I had thought the Moringa needed watering. So I put my finger all the way down to, to in the soil. I also took a spade and literally pushed the soil back and it was very dry. I went on ahead and watered the Moringa plant. Unfortunately, the Moringa leaves started yellowing and they started dropping off to the point where all of the leaves dropped off. When I decided to investigate and determine what the problem was, I took out half the soil in this container and about halfway down, the tap root was totally moist from this point 
all the way down because I've taken all, ha all half the soil out, which had me, which made me realize that the soil further down this pot, the tap root was very moist, but the soil up here was dry. The plant got too much water. It was still very moist. It did not need to be watered, but I did not know that because from the top halfway down here, it was deceiving and I thought that the plant needed to be watered. So what I've learned from this particular trial and error is you really have to gauge when the soil really dries out. So from this point on, I would realize that I would have to go a lot longer before I water the plant. So this has been some of the issues I've been having with trying to grow Moringa is trying to gauge when the plants need to be watered and when they don't. So that's a difficult uh, challenge that I've been having lately, but I am bent on being successful in growing Moringa's plants because they are a miracle tree. They have their, 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 their leaves have so many properties and if I can get my Moringa to flower again, as you can see in my previous videos, I, my Moringa did flower, then I would be able to successfully continue to grow Moringas indoors and outdoors in zone 5B with a growing season for four months. These, both these Moringa plants are grown in a um, grow light. They're doing very well. This one would have continued to do well. I probably would have had this on the floor had I not watered it prematurely. And I would have probably be about three feet tall. I would have harvested it and cut it back. So just wanted to give you updates on growing Moringa in zone 5B, indoors and outdoors some of the trials and errors that I'm incurring growing Moringa plants and some tips that I'm giving on how to successfully grow Moringa plants. Definitely grow them in tall uh, uh, pots that got a lot of depth because again, their tap roots go deep. And if you're growing a Moringa plant in a northern climate or in a zone where you have a short growing season, make a comment uh, below, let me know. Thank you for watching and don't forget to hit the like button.